Isn't that a cool bike? Yeah, but wait, how do you change gears on this thing? Just use the, uh, the friction shifters. Those are those two little levers. You have one for the rear derailleur and one for the front derailleur. It's really very easy to use, lots of fun. But uh, how do you know what gear you're in or if you're in the right gear? Well, you just do it by feel. You just play with them until you know, the system is just the way you want. At first, it feels a little different, but it's really easy to use. Mm, seems kind of ancient to me. You know, be that way, but you don't know what you're missing. I'm gonna stick to my bike. You have fun riding the dinosaur. All right, I will. All right, cheers. Okay. You're probably wondering what do friction shifters, the derailleur, Fausto Coppi and the Tour de France have in common? The roundabout answer to that question would be to say a lot more than one might think. Before the invention of the derailleur, all bicycles were either fixed gear or had two cogs, one on each side of the rear wheel. And changing gear meant that the rider had to stop, remove the rear wheel, flip it around and manually position the chain on the required cog. the most efficient drivetrain system in the world. And it was not until the 1910s that the derailleur was invented that riders, and racers in particular, could change gear without having to stop. But the early version of the derailleur system was not the most user-friendly either. In order to change gear, it required that the rider had to awkwardly reach out back to two little levers located on the seat stay and not only that, but he had to back pedals while doing it. But the bicycle industry kept improving and fine tuning the derailleur system. And finally, in the late 1920s, a French bicycle shop owner under the name of Lucien Jouy came up with a system whereby all one had to do in order to change gear was to reach out to a little lever conveniently located on the down tube and change gear in seconds. No awkward reaching out back, no bad pedaling was required. The modern group set had in effect been invented or at least an early version of it. Now for those of you who are into vintage bikes like I am, you might be interested in knowing that Lucien Jouy was the owner and founder of the Simplex brand of derailleurs. And Simplex, particularly, again, if you are into vintage bike, was an extremely well-known and dominated the group set bicycle market in the days with Campagnolo in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, and even into the 80s. Even though the derailleur was invented in the early 1910s, 
It was not until the 1950s that the bicycle industry as a whole adopted it as its standard. And the main reason for that was that the bicycling racing world of those days was not very open to technological advancement. It was very conservative, very traditionalist, and super macho. Anything that made biking easier, even if faster, was seen as cheating. Multiple cogs drivetrain system were for cheaters and women and old men and would-be racers who just didn't have what it takes. If you were a real man, if you were a real bicycle racer in those days, you just mashed those gear until your knees exploded and you didn't need any help. And to illustrate that mentality of those days, Henri de Grange, the founder and early organizer of the Tour de France, even prohibited the use of derailleur in the Tour de France until 1936. In 1937, a French rider under the name of Roger Labépi won the Tour de France with a bicycle equipped with a derailleur system. And pretty much every bike which won the Tour de France from then on was equipped with a derailleur system. But it was not until Fausto Coppi came about and won the Tour de France in 1949 and because of his extreme popularity and also added media attention, the uh, derailleur system really took off and became very popular and gained a lot of attention. Following Fausto Coppi's great win in the 1949 Tour de France, the derailleur, and along with it the friction shifter, became the standard in bicycle drivetrain. And it remained the standard for the next 40 years until the late 1980s when Shimano first started mass producing the index shifter. The index shifter was its crisper, more efficient, more consistent shifting quickly rendered the friction shifter obsolete and became the new standard and still is the standard up to this day, at least for mechanical group set. For a lot of people will argue that with electronic shifting gaining ground, the days of the index shifters are numbered. And that could very well be, but that is a completely different story in itself. Even though there is no question that the friction shifter is an inferior system to the index shifter, the friction shifter still has very clear advantage over index shifter. The beauty, the genius of the friction shifters is its simplicity. There is absolutely nothing complex about friction shifter. And that simplicity in turn means that the friction shifter, when compared to the index shifter, requires a lot less maintenance, is a lot lighter. Once you have the hang of it, is very easy to use and is an extremely robust system. So there you have it. That's what the friction shifter have in common with the derailleur, Fausto Copy and the Tour de France. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great ride, everyone.